Shalom again, everybody. Rabbi Ariel here from the Kosher Torah School, found online at koshertorah.com. Well, I told you I'd be back, and here I am. And now that I am back, we have a lot to talk about. Like I was saying in our previous video, we're in very difficult times. You don't need me to tell you that. You see what's going on in the world around you. And who amongst you actually thinks that all of a sudden everything's just going to get better and all the problems are going to resolve and the Russia and the Ukraine are just going to make love and peace and Taiwan and China are going to hug and kiss and the, the Arabs and the Israelis are just going to embrace each other like the brothers that really they're supposed to be but they're not but I'm not going to tell you those things because that's a lie you know very well that we are inundated with false information everywhere you know the old saying that if you want to hide a needle you throw it in the haystack right and this way you can't find anything that's what it's like today trying to find real truthful information now i'm not going to address political stuff economic stuff let the other guys deal with that when it comes to issues like um you know prepping getting ready for the future you notice that a lot of these prepper channels have all of a sudden become very political. And all they're talking about right now is uh, the doom and gloom and they're giving you timelines and countdowns and whatever happened to just dealing with the real deal of practical devices, practical functions, things you need to practice and do. I'm going to give you the wisest words here with regards to the issues that are coming down the pike politically. And that is, get out of the fight. It's not your fight. If you are a Bible-believing, God-fearing, religious human being, notice I leave all the different religious denominations out of that because I think we're a common denominator. Just recognize and understand that what is coming down the pike is prophecy. It's going to happen. You and I, it doesn't matter what we believe, but what matters is what you and I do. And in that respect, it's our behaviors that count. You know something, for those of the other religions, remember this, in the afterlife, you're not judged by your theology. No one, when you go to the pearly gates, is going to give you a theology test or a doctrinal quiz. They're going to look at your life and see how you lived. To quote a Jewish guy who you Christians think as one of yours, James, Yaakov, faith without works is dead. In our Jewish tradition, we don't bother to debate and argue about the afterlife. The Jewish Bible really doesn't mention it and frankly, don't care. What God is going to do in the afterlife and how God is going to judge souls, that's God's business, not yours, not mine. I will promise you one thing. You and I both, all of us, none of us are going to be judging human souls. That's God's domain alone. We have the obligation to judge human behavior. And that's why, regardless of any differences, we need to stand up for what is righteous, what is moral, what is decent, and what is good. And the rest doesn't matter. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what your politics are. Because if you're really being righteous and moral, you know what your politics are already. And I'm not telling you anything about this or that political candidate. I can't see how someone can support certain candidates, not just in the United States, but elsewhere. If and when you're staying faithful to the fundamentals of universal righteousness and morality, this is not just a biblical thing. It's certainly not just a Jewish thing. And there's still a lot of hatred and prejudice out there amongst many people. We're always pointing the finger and saying, you're going to hell. You're evil. You're the... Stop it. Enough is enough. Judge by behavior. And remember, if people are acting righteous and decent and moral, don't ask doctrinal questions. Don't look for the theology. Recognize who your true brothers and sisters are. And recognize who your true enemies are. Because the people in your own camp, the people from your own synagogues and churches and political groups, they can be just as much enemies as they are friends. Recognize and understand this.
Because our mission during these hard times is not to rise up to have our heads chopped off. It's to duck down, to stay alive, and to survive. That's why you need to be realistic and practical and down to earth. And if you don't like that word prepper, who cares? You call it for what you need to call it, but you do what you need to do. Because if and when any of these scenarios that are being talked about, some type of a downed grid, the EMP, or any other kind of realistic and viable threat, if that was to occur, what are you going to do living in your little apartment, right, with nothing more than just two or three days to do? You think the government's going to come and save you? The government's not going to come and save you. You need a back door. You need a plan. And you better start thinking about those plans. Now, I know a lot of you live in the big urban cities. When I tell you to come out here to, to, to God's country, as we call it, a lot of people have heard that call. It's unfortunate, in my opinion, at least, that Knoxville, the area where I live right now, has been inundated by people from all around the country who are coming living here, raising up our real estate rates and the like. But the majority of them are, again, like-minded conservative individuals who believe in our values. And as such, this is a welcome place for them. For those others who come in here and try to be disruptive, they'll see that they just don't fit and don't belong. Just like others in other areas have already seen that they don't fit and don't belong and are, as they say, voting with their feet. You need to consider this realistically. We're living in dark times, hard times, and the darkness and the hardness is only going to grow. We are inundated with information, the likes of which, the majority of which, is false. You know, in my religious world here, I look in social media, on the internet, and especially when it comes to Jewish mystical topics like the Kabbalah. Oh my goodness, almost everybody out there is, is full of baloney and one is worse than the other. Let me tell you something. Real Kabbalah means the teachings of the biblical prophets. You know, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. Yeah, there is something, if you will, metaphysical or mystical about it or meditative and spiritual. Fine. Big deal. Because really what it all boils down to is how you live in this world and the type of human being you are right here, right now. That's the message. So, I see all too many people teaching something called Kabbalah and they go into all the books that they read in translations and they throw in, you know, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, and they bastardize the whole thing. Do you ever see those people who want to quote the Bible and they mess it up and they twist and turn its meanings? Now, for those of you who have added things in your own beliefs. I know some of you find that very disturbing and offensive, but others embrace it. You know, if you're an evangelical Christian or if you're LDS, I don't care what your beliefs are and stuff. I care about your behaviors and your actions. I want to know that you're moral, decent, and righteous people. Because if you are, then we're family one way or another. And if you use your theology and your doctrine as a battering ram or as a hammer, or is a source of hatred, you're the enemy. And God knows, and we should too. So when you go online and you're looking for a source for real Torah or real Kabbalah, please stay exclusive into the domain of those who are Bible-believing, God-fearing, Torah-observant, Orthodox Jewish rabbis. They're the ones who walk the talk and live the life. And other people, whatever. You know, we have a saying here in America, caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. Watch out for all that stuff that's out there. A lot of it is deceptive, a lie, and it's going to guide you down a wrong path. There really is a major spiritual component in everything political going on right now. We'll have to talk about that next time. Be careful. Demonic activity is very real, and it's very active, and it's almost everywhere. God be willing. Our next class, we'll pick up and talk about that, but you think about these things that I'm telling you right now. Act upon them for good. 
All righty, guys. God's blessings. Be well. I'll see you all in our next little class. Shalom. <laughs> I gotta find the right.